So one thing that I um, found super interesting this week was um, in chapter three. And um, this chapter is about Nephi. Elder Holland kind of is talking about Nephi and his relationship with like the Book of Mormon in general and with God. Um, and in a little bit into the chapter, he talks about the like specific doctrinal teachings that were given to um, Nephi. And there's like so many. And I think we forget, like, I think sometimes we read the story of Nephi and Lehi, like, um, going to get the plates from Laban and building a ship and coming to the Americas and creating a nation. I think we kind of focus a lot on the story um, instead of, like, really the doctrine that was taught. And it, um, those books, like, the books written by Nephi and Jacob were written a lot differently than those that are abridged by, by Mormon. Um, but it, I think it is amazing how how many doctrines, like specific doctrines, um, were taught to Nephi. Um, I just thought that was, that was really cool. So when I was reading um, this week, one thing that really stuck out to me was um, Elder Holland was talking about um, the doctrine of Christ. Um, like in the later chapters of Second Nephi, when Nephi lays out the doctrine of Christ, the first principles of the gospel that we know, Faith, repentance, baptism, give the Holy Ghost and during to the end. And I don't know, it was nothing really specific that Elder Holland wrote. I mean, he wrote a lot of great things. Um, but just the idea of the simplicity of Christ's gospel just like hits me every time I read those chapters and read about those chapters. Um, like Christ's gospel, I think, I feel like we get mixed up in a lot of different things and we sometimes try and just focus way too much on on specific aspects of them but in reality like though that is the doctrine of Christ that is the gospel and if we know if we have faith and if we act on that faith by repenting and being baptized and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost and keeping commandments then we will be blessed and that's what our faith should be based on so as I was reading this week, um, I was, um, one of the chapters that I read was about Jacob. Um, and it's in like, I mean, the chapter titles are even super cool. Um, the three early witnesses at first talked about Nephi, then Jacob and Isaiah. And Nephi, I believe it is earlier talks about, um, how he's passing the plates onto Jacob and how, um, Jacob's going to be teaching and writing on the plates. And Nephi says, talks about how they're all witnesses of Christ. And um, it reminded me when I was reading the chapter about Jacob, it lists, Brother Elder Holland goes and lists kind of the main points of Jacob's sermon, Jacob's teachings about the atonement. And I think it's, I don't know why, it just hit me like Jacob saw Christ, um, Nephi saw Christ, and I Isaiah saw Christ. And I know for a fact that um, the other prophets saw Christ, that they, that Christ ministered to them. And it's just amazing how, um, reliable his testimony is and his teachings are because he saw Christ. Um, and it, I feel like it makes his teachings about the atonement a lot more powerful. This week I was reading about, um, Isaiah. Um, it's one of the other chapters, the three witnesses chapters, um, uh, Elder Holland is talking about how um, Isaiah was just a very messianic prophet. He prophesied of Christ um, more than anyone else in the Bible or in the Book of Mormon. He's quoted not just in the New Testament, but in the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants. Um, and I think that's pretty amazing, um, mostly due to the fact that it is so confusing. Um, every time I read the Book of Mormon, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go slow through Isaiah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out. And then I end up just like hurrying reading through it so I can be done with it. Um, but Elder Holland in this chapter really talks a lot about kind of what Brother Sharp talked about in one of the lectures about Isaiah, how there are just multiple meanings, um, multiple ways that we can look at Isaiah, whether it's through his context, whether it's through the context of Christ, or whether it's in our context today. And I think that's pretty cool. And I think that like... Um, is a great example of what a prophet does and what a prophet is meant to do. So this week, um, I read a couple chapters in Christ and the New Covenant. Um, 
one thing that really stuck out to me was, well, so in one of the chapters, um, Elder Holland was going through, like, kind of all of the the prophets, kind of, like, post-Jacob, post, like, small plates, right? Um, and kind of, like, just, like, listing what they prophesied about Christ, what they taught about Christ. And it just is amazing, like, how much, especially about Christ's life, we we know due to the Book of Mormon. Um, like, I think a lot of us, at least me, I always thought, like, oh, we need the Bible to know about his life, but we need the Book of Mormon to, like, know more about, like, his doctrine. But that's, like, totally not true. And we learn so much, not that we don't need the Bible, we obviously need the Bible, but we learn so much about his life um, and who he was still in the Book of Mormon, as well as learn so much about his gospel. And I thought that was super cool. So this week, something I learned um, was in a chapter called Types and Shadows, the Law of Moses. So Elder Holland was talking about the Law of Moses and what it really means, like in reference to the Book of Mormon um, and to just the gospel in general. And one thing he said, I just wanted to quote it because um, it was really good. It says, Thus it is crucial to understand that the law of Moses was overlaid upon and thereby included many basic parts of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which had existed before it. So pretty much saying that, like, the law of Moses and the gospel weren't, like, these independent entities. Um, they were different, but they were not independent of each other. Um, and it just reminded me of, like, Christ didn't um, end the law of Moses. His coming didn't end the law of Moses. He fulfilled the law of Moses. Um, but it didn't end it. Um, there are still, like, spirit of the law, letter of the law. We do live by the spirit of the law, but there is still the letter of the law. Like, there are still rules. Uh, there are still commandments. There are still things that we need to do, um, but doing them for a different purpose. And that's a lot what Elder Holland talked about in this chapter. I thought it was cool. So I'm just about done with um, Christ in the New Covenant by Elder Holland. Um, and one thing I learned this week um, was, well, it wasn't necessarily learned, um, but... Something he wrote that I found really, really cool. Um, he talked about the resurrection and really the atonement and how um, the gifts that we receive um, because of Christ's sacrifice. Um, one line that he says, he says, The royal role and priestly power of celestial kings and queens, including the restored and perfected bodies commensurate with such a station, are among the highest and holy, holiest gifts of the atonement of Jesus Christ. And we really, through the atonement of Jesus Christ, I do believe that we can become kings and queens um, in God's kingdom. That we can, that we will one day be able to, um, to be perfect and to be how God is. Um, I've really enjoyed reading this book and it's been really fun for me to, to learn more about the Book of Mormon and for me to share it with whoever will be watching this. Um, if you didn't watch the whole video, I don't really care. But um, I hope that... Um, I know that my testimony grew, and I hope that you will read the book or just read the Book of Mormon, and your testimony won't grow too. Thanks.